Yes, welcome in everybody and we are lucky enough to be catching up with Jeetan Patel to talk all things cricket and uh, as I say Jeetan, welcome along, good to see you, haven't seen you for a couple of weeks since the Phil the Basin, which was your first stint as a cricket commentator, it was a hell of a day. Yeah, it was a great day and I think um, I think the people at Christchurch and also Stephen Fleming himself were happy that Trackside and TAB could cover it. How did you enjoy it? Oh, I loved it, I thought it was a great day, I said all, it, all, it, all day actually that I'd wanted to be out there playing because it's something I've always wanted to do is stand in the middle of the bus reserve when it's full but uh, no it was great fun um, working with Smithy was was good as well I've never done the commentary so I was a little bit nervous but uh, he got me through it he's a pro eh yeah he knows what he's talking about so it's easy when you've got someone like that I suppose domestic cricket you're just off the plane you've had a very nice win uh, up in Auckland yeah great win uh, the boys actually the seam has bowled really well on a deck that offered a little bit but uh, not as much as Thirty eight wickets would suggest, but um, no, the guys really happy with where we are. We we're sitting fourth on the table, but only three points behind, so we've got a massive chance with two games to go. You picked up a wicket, but I feel I can start calling you an all rounder now because you're starting to get some runs. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to be labelled the all rounder just yet because then there's too much pressure. But uh, no, it's it's good fun at the moment being able to go out there and score some runs and and contribute if I can't contribute with the ball. All right, let's have a look at the uh, World Cup cricket now and we've uh, just come off the back of a pretty interesting game last night, Jeets, the Aussies going down, maybe the end of Ricky Ponting, India looking fantastic. India do look good, uh, I picked obviously Australia-Sri Lanka early doors in the final and that's not going to happen anymore but um, India do look good, especially with Yuvraj Singh in the runs and that middle order needs to get them through the tight positions and they've done that so far throughout the tournament but uh, yeah, it could have been Ricky's last game, we're not sure, no one's, no one's said anything just yet, but he did look very dejected and he almost looked excited about playing golf and uh, looking after his dogs rather than um, being on the cricket field. <laughs> Another player that could be having his last game as captain for New Zealand is tonight, Daniel Vittori, <coughs> uh, massive match for them tonight against South Africa and I guess cutting straight to the chase, have we got the ammunition? I think we do, but we have to be really smart about how we do it. I think we have to bat first. Um, that's the first thing we have to do because if we don't we're going to be chasing 280 and, and could bundle against three decent spinners. Well, uh, my preference would be to, to take three spinners into the game and open with one of them but, um, but obviously I'm not sure how they'll, they'll look at the side. Three spinners, so yeah, obviously Vittori's back, um, Nathan McCullum's firmly in the 11, Luke Woodcock, chance to play? I, I really want him to, I think the guy's deserved every chance he's been given, you know, he's the two times he has played, he's performed, he's, asked, he's done what people have asked of him and I think he needs a chance at this World Cup to prove, not only to himself, but to everyone that he's good enough. South Africa, they look massive. They, you know, they've got Hashim Amla, A.B. de Villiers, Graham Smith, Dumini. Um, their batting lineup is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> Dale Steyn, probably one of the best one-day reverse swing bowlers as well. That They are going to be a tough nut. <clears throat> oh, they really are. I looked at the player rankings today and... And uh, Amla is sitting on top with the batting, um, and you've got Stain and Walk on the top <coughs> three with the bowlers. So, you know, they get a, t a great seam attack early doors, especially with Zach Callis as your third seamer, and then they've got three quality spinners. Three dollars there on New Zealand, drifting out from the 280, uh, 135 for South Africa. I know a lot of that has been money, but also the question mark over Kyle Mills. He's had, got that injury issue. Dan Vittori probably isn't at 100%, but enough for him to play. Kyle, how crucial that he plays? I think it is crucial because he is one of our best uh, new ball bowlers. Although Southie's bowled really well at the other end, I think uh, that Millsy's, Millsy's done something for a long time for New Zealand and someone we can trust in. But um, if he's unavailable, that means that it firmly does, says that we, does say that we have to open with a spin bowler, and which means we'll probably play three. Let's have a look at the New Zealand lineup now as far as the high bat goes for us in the familiar names there and there, there is a lot of potency there but I'm just wondering Jeetan if we were to get past this this lot tonight and beat South Africa Kyle Mills didn't play um, so we've got a semi-final to play you start looking for other players to come into the side I know Andy Mackay got four wickets yesterday would he be the sort of guy you'd phone and say hey come and help us in the semi? Oh mate I, I would I certainly would if I was a selector he's bowling really well at the moment he's bowling fast and he's swinging the ball both ways he's consistently gets it to reverse so he's definitely an option if um, if something was to happen and we get through tonight but uh, you know if the guys if the guys get in early and bat early and uh, and we get some runs on the board I think it, it bodes for an exciting time in the semi-final or the final if we get through tonight. 
South African side, let's have a look at their <coughs> lineup now. And as I mentioned, the top of their um, batting lineup is fantastic. Hashim Amla, as you say, is the top of his game. Jacques Carlos is just a freak. He just keeps playing fantastically. But right through that order, Jeetan, um, it's quality. Yeah, you've got strikers, you know. You've got strikers of the ball with Johan Bolter at 10, or selection 10 there. But, you know, he's, he is a natural striker of the ball also to finish off innings. And, and you've got Dumini, Mornay van Veek, Colin Ingram, guys who have played a little bit of cricket, but enough enough to, to win them a game. And, and that, I think that's the thing that could, could stop us. Do you think South Africa might have in the back of their mind that we've dealt to them the last couple of World Cups and, and dismissed them and got, got them out of the comp? Yeah, and I think also the fact that they've been labelled the chokers you know, for the last 10 years. And, and well, no one wants to be labelled that, but sometimes it's actually quite a good thing to be the underdog. And I, I want to believe that we'll get through, but uh, South Africa look really strong. They do look strong. The other game that we've got coming up as well, um, one more quarter-final left. That's look, that looks pretty exciting as well. Yeah, England, Sri Lanka, and you know, Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka are tougher than anyone anywhere. So I, I'm looking forward to that game because I think that's the game that, that will either decide... My old man reckons England will win, but I think Sri Lanka will get through and, uh, and go on to win the tournament. You played a bit with Michael Yardy and he's had to go home because of depression. He, he's come out and said he's got depression and he's got to go home, he can't cope. It's uh, good, honest <coughs> stuff from him, but how will that affect England? Oh, I, I don't think it'll affect him too much. I think they'll probably be happy that he has gone because he can actually sort his life out and, uh, and what's going on. They've been, a, they've been a long way away from home, uh, been a long time away from home and... I think for some of them, they do just need to go home and sleep in their own beds. Yep. Let's have a very quick look at the overall winner that has repriced fresh off the cab. <coughs> is, uh, India there now rocketing into 260 favourites. I guess, Jeetan, because they are guaranteed a semi-final, uh, a lot of the rest are not. So if you had a lazy 20, where would you be looking here? Throw it straight at Sri Lanka. Straight at Sri Lanka. Yeah. Six dollars. Yeah. Twenty. Well, make it one twenty. Well, I reckon it's easy money to be honest. But um, no, that, that's where I'd go. I know that for sure. India have got a tough semi-final against Pakistan in Mahali, which is right on the border. So you know it, that's going to be a bit niggly. Um, whether they get through that or not, Sri Lanka will go through. Listen to Jeetan Patel too, because driving in here, you've had some luck on the punt lately. Yeah, I had, I had a little bit of luck, uh, obviously, in the weekend again, but uh, two weeks ago on the derby, got the pick six, and it's my second so far. So they're starting to call me the pick six whiz. Beautiful. But, um, but yeah, no, I'm hoping to get a few more of those, I'll tell you that. Good man. All right, Jeetan, uh, we'll wrap it up here. We are going to catch up with Jeets next week. He's got a nice home game, so hopefully uh, they can pick up a win domestically, and we'll join you here again next week with more World Cup updates.